Hello, my name is An Wen, and I'm a simulation engineer in our aerospace industry team at Modelon. Let's talk about liquid hydrogen as a sustainable technology for aircraft fuel. In this video, we're going to focus on liquid hydrogen storage and show how to model, simulate, and view results in Modelon Impact. I will be showcasing experiments that start from sizing the storage tanks with design requirements, then move to testing the tank variants in scenarios like refueling, storage, and fuel extraction. Before we jump into the implementation of liquid hydrogen storage, let's first talk about what liquid hydrogen storage is. Hydrogen, when used as a fuel on aircraft, first needs to be stored so it can be consumed during flight. This is typically done either at high pressure, around 6 or 700 bar, as a gas, or at low temperature, near minus 250 degrees Celsius in a liquid state. This video focuses on the second option. The benefits of storing hydrogen in a liquid state are that for a given hydrogen energy stored, the size of the tank can be roughly 800 times smaller than at ambient condition, while still having a fluid pressure near atmospheric pressure. But how do we realistically implement this technology? Part of the challenges in implementation are to maintain the fluid at this low temperature, reduce leakages, both the undesired ones and the ones allowed by design for safety reasons, and to warm the fluid for its utilization. Fortunately, a lot of these challenges can be addressed early in the engineering design process, and done so virtually. System simulation can help you assess the feasibility of new technologies such as liquid hydrogen storage and help you make better design choices for new systems and existing systems alike. As a result, engineering teams tend to see a speed up in their time to market while saving money that would otherwise go into numerous physical prototypes and testing facilities. For the purposes of this video, we'll be sizing a liquid hydrogen storage tank and evaluating the pressure and temperature evolution during different scenarios. If you're a Model on Impact user, you could also try out this application by following the tutorial in the Help Center. Now let's start by getting into Model on Impact, Model on's cloud-based system simulation platform. Simply log in from wherever you have access to the internet, open a workspace and start working with models. When I open Impact, I have the option to create a new workspace or open an existing one. In my case, I already have a workspace developed on the hydrogen storage tutorial from the Help Center, so I'll open that. Once the workspace is loaded, I'm presented with a selection of libraries on the left-hand pane. I only have a few libraries necessary for my hydrogen storage modeling, but Modelon Impact Pro users have access to Modelon 17 Modelica-based libraries. These libraries contain components and models for a variety of applications that span multiple industries. For liquid hydrogen storage, Modelon has a pre-built experiment package for liquid hydrogen tanks ready to go in the Vapor Cycle Library. This package includes a sub-package dedicated to tank sizing. Which uses methodologies that take into consideration mechanical strength, structural design, heat transfer, and dormancy. This package also includes example models that use hydrogen's tank for dynamic simulations. The first example is of a detailed tank filling experiment with a discretized wall to observe the temperature profile. Here we have a result where we could see the temperature at different heights of the tank evolve over time. Another example is of a sealed tank which has heat ingress. This tank, with the additional heat, causes the temperature and pressure rise until a relief valve opens and reaches a steady boil off rate. Lastly, another example is of an evaporation of liquid cryogenic hydrogen using a heat exchanger. Following the tutorial I mentioned earlier, I already have the completed package loaded into my workspace.
The first step of the workflow is to size the storage tanks using the sizing models from the Vapor Cycle Library. There are two sizing models because the tutorial covers the sizing of a storage tank for a two-aisle aircraft. The first uses polyurethane foam. There are three sections to prescribe the sizing parameters. The first is the tank design where parameters define the requirements like maximum pressure, the safety factor for considering mechanical strength, and also the nominal conditions, like temperature and pressure at filling, which will be used for the heat transfer considerations. The second section is for the tank size and shape, where the size problem is defined. There are several variations, but in this example, the sizing is constrained by the outer radius to fit within the fuselage and also by the fuel mass to not exceed the maximum takeoff mass. The mass calculation will also take into account the mass of the resulting tank wall thickness and any of the tank accessories. The third section is for the tank insulation, where the thickness can be directly prescribed or it can be calculated based on a prescribed dormancy duration requirement. Different materials can be selected for different layers. In this case, we have aluminum selected for the inner wall and the exterior wall while using polyurethane foam for the middle layer. This problem will then return the length and volume of the storage tanks. So after simulating The sizing models, the variables can be found under the calculated values. Variables can also be shown in visualizers called stickies. So I have a view here called sizing, which has some of the key variables and parameters added onto a sticky. Now that we have the geometries for the tanks we're interested in, we can move on to setting up test models to run dynamic experiments with them. The tutorial goes through setting up a base class that will be used for the different scenarios. Tank Test Base Since there are many building blocks that will be used, it is more convenient to set the core of the system once and reuse it rather than building each test model from scratch. This includes the tank model, the check relief valve, the thermal and fluid boundaries, as well as the air data and the atmosphere model. Using the test bench, the advantage is to be able to easily change parameters or replace components. For the filling and pressurization and flight range experiments, different inputs will be connected to the boundary conditions. This also enables the ability to make changes in the base class, which will automatically be inherited by the experiments that extend from them, such as changing the parameterization of this pressure relief valve. The test bench is set up to simplify the parameterization of the tank geometry and the system initialization with these top level parameters. For more advanced customization, we provide access to the underlying code. Any changes to the model from the graphical user interface is reflected here. And for each of the component models, like this tank, if we were to open this tank model, each of these also expose their code layers as well for inspection. Moving along from the base class, tank test base, the first analysis is on the filling of the tanks with liquid cryogenic hydrogen. A separate test model is created by extending from this base class to create a tank filling. In this model, we add input blocks for the altitude to the air data and for the mass flow into the fluid boundary. Using model on impacts experiment mode, we could use this one model to run several experiments. 
I have four experiments set up here, two for the foam tank and one for the multi-layered insulated tank. In these experiments, modifiers are put on the model. They define the tank geometry and their corresponding filling schedule. The two experiments at the top are for a multi-experiment. In this case, we're going to run an experiment for the foam tank with four different fill rates. And then the other experiment here does the same thing, but for the multi-layered insulated tank. Results have already been generated, so we could look at the results using stickies. Clicking on one of the results and enabling my pre-configured views, I could look at the foam results as well as the multi-layered insulated results at the same time. We could see the main differences between the two. Due to the lower tank mass density of the polyurethane foam, it has allowed a larger volume, so it takes longer than a multi-insulated tank to fill up at the same flow rate. The liquid and vapor temperatures and pressures are higher in the polyurethane foam than the multi-layered insulation tank. Fortunately for, for both of the tanks, uh, the pressure is within their maximum design pressure. So I mentioned that there were also multi-run experiments, so let me look at those results as well. I have the results for the foam insulated tank at those four different flow rates, 2, 5, 10, and 20 kilograms per second. We can see that at the higher flow rates, there is an increase uh, of temperature, a higher one that causes a buildup of pressure that then causes the relief valve to open, causing a loss of fuel. The second experiment in the next phase of the tank cycle is storage. This experiment is meant to observe the temperature and pressure in the tank with heat ingress. Again, a new test model is created by extending from the base class, but this time the input to the fluid boundary is maintained so that no flow is intentionally added or withdrawn, and an additional heat source is added to allow for extra heat input. This is a dynamic experiment to check the effect of ambient and external heat sources on the temperature and pressure rise within the tank due to evaporation and vapor expansion. The ambient T heat source is a function of the atmosphere model, while the additional environment Q heat source can be modulated. Again, we use experiments to use this scenario on multiple tank variations, for one for the foam and one for the multi-layered insulated tank. Let's look at the results for the polyurethane foam. For the beginning of the experiment, the ambient conditions immediately causes the temperature and pressure to slowly rise over time. Once the additional environmental heat source begins to increase, that rate increases further. After some time, the pressure reaches a point where it gets near the maximum pressure for safety, and the check relief valve needs to open allowing vapor to exit and avoid the high pressure. This continues until the pressure relief valve reaches a steady state. The last experiment observes temperature and pressure evolution during liquid extraction from the tank to the engine during flight. Again, this is a separate model that is created by extending from the base class with added sources for the boundary conditions. 
Table lookup blocks will read data from a file to get the altitude and the corresponding fuel flow extraction required by the propulsion system based on time. These data files can be conveniently stored within the project library's resources folder. These can be replaced in the model to switch to different flight schedules. Here is the flight experiment set up for the aircraft with polyurethane foam insulated tank. Let's look at the results. Opening the flight schedule view, we can see the altitude over time as well as the liquid extraction rate over time. Next on to the results, if we open the results view, we can see that the mass of the fuel in the tank decreased during the flight. The temperature of the hydrogen in the liquid and vapor state slowly increased over time, but the pressure always remained in a safe range, so no venting was required. And there you have it. I've just shown you a quick demo at a high level of using model on impact for system simulation of liquid hydrogen storage applications. We've sized two tanks to fit within the design constraints of the aircraft and studied the pressure and temperature changes in different conditions to see how much heat can be ingressed to the tank. As you've seen now, system simulation is an efficient and cost-effective way to help you visualize how your systems will behave in the real world, and in turn, allowing you to make better design decisions. Once again, I encourage you to visit the Model on Help Center, not just for the tutorial we've reviewed today, but also for free resources that help fortify your knowledge of system simulation. Of course, the best way to see how system simulation can work for you is to talk to us. Fill out a request for a demo in the form below or in the description of this video to speak with one of Modelon's experts today.